welcome to this lecture 26 in which we will continue with the, the previous lectures uh, unfinished portion that is uh, graphical representation of uh, groundwater quality continued and after this we will move on to a new chapter that is on surface and subsurface explorations of uh, groundwater. So, here we have already discussed that is uh, in the previous lecture the the graphical representations are of the type vertical bar graphs followed by trilinear diagrams followed by radiating vector diagrams. followed by circular diagrams followed by semi logarithmic diagrams and there is one last uh, there is another method of graphical representation that is known as the pattern diagrams. So, in this the first two methods we have already discussed in the previous lecture. So, we will move on to the third method that is the radiating vector diagram. In this radiating vector diagram, so the, the concentration, the sample identification number is written and uh, in this each of the, so there are 6 lines which are at 60 degree orientation and the length of each line and of course, the order is uh, maintained same. So, here uh, always the vertical line represents the sodium plus potassium concentration the length and of course, the length of each of these lines represent the is proportional to the concentration. The next the 60 degree line represents the magnesium concentration the length of the 60 degree line and from the vertical. Similarly, the length of the the 120 degree from the uh, clockwise from the vertical represents the bicarbonate concentration. The length of the 180 degree or vertically downward line represents the chloride concent the chloride concentration and uh, the length of the 240 degree line clockwise from the vertically upward line represents the sulphate concentration and then lastly the the length of the 360 line clockwise from the vertically upward line or 60 degree from the vertically uh, anti clockwise from the vertically upward line represents the calcium concentration. So, here say this is uh, say this is uh, the so in this the, the sample identification number. And then, if there is a separa, if there is a an another sample, so this is uh, one, and then say this is a, so this is sample two. So in this case, so again the same thing. So this could be the same pattern is maintained.
and uh, at 120 degree it is uh, HCO3 and uh, so here so it could be the chloride concentration and uh, it could be so this uh, next line is the sulphate concentration and then followed by so this is the calcium concentration this is for sample 2. So, these are the radial vector diagrams. So, basically and each at the length of uh, this one there is uh, the lengths represent the concentration in uh, milli equivalent per liter. So, this is the radiating vector diagram. So, now we will go to the next uh, graphic representation that is the circular diagram so in this basically so these are uh, the pi charts and uh, so the the area of the circle represents the the total uh, this uh, the area of the circle represents the uh, total ionic concentration and in this case say this could be na sodium plus potassium and uh, this could be chloride so this could be sulfate so this could be bicarbonate then this could be calcium and this could be magnesium so the circles area area is proportional to total ionic concentrations and the sector in each of the circle represents a fraction of this total ionic concentration occupied by respective ion whether it is a positive ion or a negative ion. So, this is say sample 1 and then similarly for sample 2. So, if uh, the concentration is less so it is represented by a smaller circle and within this so this could be Na plus K and uh, this could be chlorine. So, this could be sulphate. So, this could be bicarbonate and this could be calcium and then this could be magnesium. So, this is sample 2. So, like this using this circular diagrams which are essentially pie charts and the so here the of course the there is a scale for radius because the area of the circle varies as the radius. So, therefore, uh, here there is a a scale and then so in uh, milli equivalent per liter. So, this is a circular diagram. Next we will go to and of course, so this is also the circular diagram. So, here also, so this is also taken from the source that is uh, Hem in 1970. Next, we will go to the other uh, graphic representation, which is the semi logarithmic uh, 
diagrams so in this so this is taken from the source that is scholar Nineteen sixty two, and uh, here, so essentially, so there are lines corresponding to each of the ion, like calcium, magnesium, then sodium, then bicarbonate sulfate and then chloride and uh, here so the this line the vertical line represents the concentration in logarithmic axis so this is point 1 so this is 1 and then this is 10 and maybe here so this is a uh, 100 and then this so it could be say for one sample so if this is the constant the the this ordinate indicates the calcium con calcium ion concentration then uh, this ordinate indicates a magnesium ion concentration this ordinate indicates a sodium ion concentration and then this ordinate indicates the hco3 ion concentration and uh, this point indicates a sulfate ion concentration and then this point indicates the the chloride ion concentration and all these are joined so this could be sample 1 and similarly for say another sample so the calcium ion concentration could be this much as indicated in this scale and, uh, and again so the the magnesium ion concentration could be this much the sodium ion concentration could be this much then the bicarbonate ion concentration could be this much sulfate ion concentration could be this much and the chloride ion concentration could be this much so therefore join each of them by straight line so this represents sample 2 and here so these uh, concentrations so these are uh, in uh, milli equivalent per liter so this is the another method of uh, graphic representation graphical representation of uh, ground water quality and then lastly we'll discuss the the pattern diagram so that is the and this pattern diagrams again this is taken from the same source that is uh, hem from 1970 and here so from a vertical line the cations are represented to the left so this is cations in 
milli equivalent per meter per liter cations concentration and then similarly the anion concentration so that is in milli equivalent per liter and uh, here for each of the sample like uh, so in this so along the the top one represents na plus k on the cation side or the left side and the the along the same line along the right side it represents the chloride concentration similarly the second line represents the calcium concentration and uh, along the same line it represents the bicarbonate concentration and then the along the third line it represents the magnesium concentration and uh, along the right side line it represents the uh, sulfate concentration is represented and then the bottom most line so it represents the iron concentration and uh, here it could be the carbonate concentration so basically in this case so there will be there are four cations and then four anions so in this case say for example a particular uh, uh, sample doesn't have iron or uh, uh, as well as carbonate so in that case both this will be zero so then if it is if it has a certain uh, magnesium concentration certain sulfate concentration then uh, certain calcium concentration and certain bicarbonate concentration and then lastly it has certain uh, sodium plus potassium concentration and then certain chloride concentration so in this case so this represents so this is uh, sample 1 so basically and then this and then similarly suppose you want, there is another sample which has uh, say this much of uh, sodium and potassium concentration and this much of chloride concentration and uh, this much of calcium concentration and uh, this much of bicarbonate ion concentration and uh, say uh, this much of magnesium concentration and uh, this much of sulfate concentration and uh, maybe this much of iron concentration and this much of carbonate concentration so in that case simply join each of them so this represents sample 2 and so on so like this the graphical representation so basically they indicate through this uh, the lengths we indicate the maybe 10 20 and so on so this is uh, the so these are the six different types of uh, graphic representations of groundwater quality and now we will move on to the new module so that is on uh, surface and subsurface explorations of groundwater and uh,
explorations or investigations of ground water. So, in this lecture, we will discuss the geological methods followed by geophysical methods. So, in the geological methods, let us discuss the remote sensing and in the geophysical method, let us discuss this electrical analogy. Electrical resistivity, I am sorry. So, this uh, firstly this uh, surf and uh, of course, all this they belong to the surface investigations of ground water. And after completing the surface investigations of ground water, so, we will move on to the subsurface investigations of ground water. And uh, here one thing we should realize the surface investigations of ground water. So, they are uh, simple and uh, less expensive. Therefore, the amount of information obtained after analyzing the surface investigation data is incomplete. So, this needs to be supplemented by appropriate subsurface investigations. So, now let us move over to the geological methods. methods of uh, surface investigation of ground water. And uh, here, so basically, so it involves collection that is data collection, analysis and 
and uh, hydrogeological interpretation of maps comma aerial photographs geologic maps geological maps or logs comma other records and uh, here so this so this must be supplemented by it needs to be supplemented by field surveys or reconnaissances or uh, reconnaissance comma stream flow and uh, spring springs data well yields ground water recharge or discharge or levels so only when it is supplemented so it will give some uh, one. so here the knowledge of deposition erosional events may indicate the extent and uh, regularity of uh, aquifers or water bearing formations also the the type of rocks type of rock formations indicates so here this is not only rock it is soil or rock formations indicates the magnitude of water yield this uh, stratigraphy and geological history may reveal or say provide aquifer 
details. The natural thickness of uh, overlying layers and uh, dip of uh, water bearing layers may indicate the estimated estimates of uh, drilling depths. Likewise, confined aquifers may provide information about uh, flowing or artificial wells etc. Landforms may indicate about unconsolidated formations acting as aquifers land uh, that is I am sorry sand dunes glacier outwashes etc. So, basically in this uh, geological methods. So, we will uh, try to get the as much data from the aerial photograph as well as from the, the ground uh, details. And now, let us go to so this uh, remote sensing. So, this remote sensing photographs which is generally abbreviated as RS. So, RS photographs at uh, various electromagnetic wavelengths. provide vital ground water information. So, this RS has developed very fast in the recent years recent developments in RS 
in remote sensing. has uh, resulted in lot of water resources related applications. And uh, here So, the observation patterns colors relief can enable us to distinguish the different or the differences in geology, soil, soil moisture, vegetation and land use. So, this photogeology can help in differentiating rock or soil types permeability aerial distribution areas of groundwater recharge or discharge maps can classify areas into maps which can classify areas into say good, fair or say poor groundwater yield. can be prepared. Now, let us uh, list the tabular, so the surface features. So, this is the table of surface features. identified on aerial photographs. Which assist in Groundwater 
कंडीशन इवैल्युएशन एंड दिस इज टेकन फ्रॉम सोर्स इज हीथ एंड ट्रेनर 1968 and uh, mollard in 1968 so here in firstly there will be details of topography and there will be details of uh, freya to fights basically they are the surf plants at the surface ground that is on the ground surface or say even water surface and uh, aquatic plants so this is the second data and thirdly there is geologic landforms expected to contain relatively permeable strata then it is followed by we can also identify this lakes and streams so lakes means they could be natural or they could be reservoirs constructed out of uh, dams or so there could be moist depressions and seepages there could be springs and lastly there could be artificial water features like uh, wells developed springs reservoirs canals etc so all this can be identified in this uh, table of uh, surface features and uh, say for example if there is a an aerial photograph which shows say dense vegetation like this so then it is an indication of the availability of uh, so this uh, aerial photograph showing dense vegetation of uh, surface plants so indicating shallow groundwater availability and here so this could be the scale in say maybe kilometers and this could be the the north direction so 
by identifying this uh, so this dense vegetation of uh, surface plants or phreatophytes so we can conclude that uh, there is uh, shallow groundwater availability in that area so next we'll go to the geophysical exploration so in the geophysical exploration so this uh, scientific measurements are carried out to obtain hydrogeological properties uh, regarding the mineral deposits as well as geological structure and uh, so with the so discovery of oil in say 1926 so this geophysical ex explorations have become more common in recent times so geophysical explorations are being uh, widely used for groundwater investigations so these geophysical explorations they detect anomalies or uh, differences in physical properties within earth's crust. So, here so some of the properties like uh, density, magnetism, elasticity, electric resistivity. electric resistivity can be easily measured in uh, geophysical explorations. and uh, so this electric resistivity electrical resistivity method so is a very important uh, geophysical method under the for uh, groundwater exploration so, this electrical resistivity 
which is abbreviated as ER. So, so this ER is the resistance in ohms. between opposite faces of a unit cube of material. So, this uh, ER the electrical resistivity which is also denoted as rho. So, this is equal to R into A divided by L where this R is the resistance So, this is in ohms and A is the sectional area in meter square and L is the distance between opposite uh, Faces. So, that is in meters. So, this electrical resistivity, so it will be in terms of ohm meters, it has units of ohm meters, and uh, this one the electrical resistivity. So, we will discuss about the electrical resistivity in the next lecture. Thank you.